Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next The Promised Neverland manga review. This one's going to be for chapter 181.2, which is a special side story, Seeking the Sky of Freedom. This is the second of, I believe, three extra chapters that we're getting of The Promised Neverland. Uh, the first one was, of course, the sort of Ray flashback with Isabel uh, that sort of clarified a lot of the stuff uh, from basically the first arc that we didn't quite get. Uh, this one is obviously about uh, Sister Krona um, in terms of how she became the character that she was um, when we met her in the series. Um, so that's cool. The third chapter... I think is meant to be some sort of an epilogue type thing, but I actually don't know. I, I feel very out of the loop on what exactly the situation is with regards to like how many extra chapters we're getting in that I only found out like, you know, a few days ago that this chapter was actually coming out today. So I, I feel like I really don't <laughs> really know what's going on. So if you know the details about what other extra chapters are actually coming out, feel free, you know, let me know in the comments below. But um, yeah, before we go through this sort of page by page, overall, I enjoyed this chapter. You know, it's a 40 page chapter, so it's basically like two chapters in one. It tells a pretty complete story. Is it the most important story that The Promised Neverland has to tell? Not really, in that I think a lot of people could come up with um, better stories to fill in gaps than this one necessarily. In that I like Sister Krona as a character, but I would much rather get um, these chapters focused on, you know, expanding on what needs expanding on, which is the ending. You know, actually, you know, given that it's 181.1 and one, uh, 181.2, use it as an epilogue. That's the problem with the ending of The Promised Neverland, is that the actual ending just sort of ends in midair. It's like, okay, they found her and she's kind of going to try with them even though she doesn't have her memories back and it's sort of a happy ending. But the lack of continuation after that, that the author for some reason thought that it was good enough to just end on that note, to me that's not good enough. So you have to have something to continue on from that. So why wasn't you know the last chapter or this one something along those lines. I hope if there is another chapter that that's what they'll do because I really do think it is needed that this is a really good series and I know some people thought it went off the rails from about the the second or third arc onwards but in my opinion the quality remained high pretty much right up until the last couple of chapters where it really rushed towards the ending and otherwise I actually think you know, for the most part, it hit most of the points it needed to across its run. And it really is just the ending really suffering. So a good epilogue chapter, if they give it the 40 page treatment, I think could sort of uh, rescue the ending of The Promised Neverland. And then there's always the hope that the anime expands on things and, you know, delivers in that front as well. So I, th I think we're not too many weeks away from the, the start of uh, season two of the anime, which is good. So, um, yeah, let's just get into discussing this chapter where I'll give my specific thoughts on, on what's going on here. So it is a flashback chapter about Krona, uh, covering basically, like I said, how she becomes the very sort of uh, ruthless character that she is at the start, where her, you know, quest, her ambition comes from, her trying to outdo Isabella and stuff like that. Because, you know, the, the little bit of a backstory we got with her, you know, presented, you know, a slightly different character, but we didn't go into it all that much. This one presents a much more interesting uh, sense of who she was before. So Sister Krona is getting in trouble uh, from Grandma, I think, here. Uh, you don't have it, you know, you haven't finished your embroidery assignment, even though you had all night to do it. No, everyone else is laughing. She says that she put it in her bag and it's gone now. And Krona's, Krona's opinion on this is that they got her. You know, I was kicked down. It's over that this is her. She She's sort of a little bit weak of will and the others are able to dominate her. We know that among the sisters, it is a very competitive thing. They're always stacked up against each other to find who's the best. And I think they, they, they get to this point of like, ultimately to become a mom, it's already a competitive thing. They only choose the, the kids with the best scores from the houses to become 
as sisters. And then among the sisters, it's even more competitive to see who becomes the mom. Because not all of them can go on to become that. It's only the best of the best who actually become moms in the end. So we see that she's gotten through one stage of it, but is sort of struggling up against such competitive kind of girls here, as we see. So we see this other girl who seems a bit kind of taller, older, uh, put up something and is like, is this what you're looking for? And it is Krona's embroidery. So she steps forward, you know, gives it to her and... Uh, this is where Krona recognizes her. Cecile, you finally recognized me. Hi, Krona. So uh, it's established that she left the house that Krona was in two years ago. And the reveal here is that the reason she didn't recognize her before is because Cecile has gotten thin from who she was before. We get a really brief flashback sequence to people bull bullying her for being a quote unquote fatso. Um, and obviously she has uh, slimmed down during her mom training, I guess. Um, so that's why she wasn't really noticed before now. Um, and it's just as said here, yeah, she had straight blonde hair and blue eyes. My older sister was like a doll. Uh, but they also do cover that she did beat up the boys who were, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> bullying her, basically. So uh, Cecile here notes that Krona hasn't changed since she last saw her. Um, and she kind of just warns her here, you never show weakness. That's how you sort of stay alive here. There are only a handful who can become sisters and even fewer who can, can become moms. Everyone is trying to get the opportunity to stay alive at the expense of others. This is the competitiveness is that, you know, they, they choose to, to potentially be a mom to survive the house. And then to survive the, the sister training, you have to become a mom. So it's, you know, life on the line stuff here that's why it's so impactful and important Krona breaks down crying and is so happy that Cecile is actually alive um, and so you know there she has a friend in here she has an ally in here you know the reality of her situation hasn't changed but she has a friend she has Cecile so uh, this is where they it's revealed to them all I will only nominate one lady to become a sister from this class everyone else will be rejected um, so again, this is where it gets, I suppose, a little bit complicated of like, um, they're training here to be a sister, which a sister is basically a sort of mom in training. It's, it's kind of confusing because they, they didn't really go into the structure all that much, but the idea is that a sister is someone who can become a mom when there is a mom position open because there's only so many plants. Uh, so I think that's the basic idea. Um, so um, th this is where the competitive comes in, you know, the idea of them all looking at the one chair, the one position that's going to come out of this class. That's what has to happen here. So Sealed then immediately announces, we're going to escape from here. Um, they're wondering, like, how we get the, again, the, the chip inside them. That's why they can't escape. Uh, if we leave the site, we die. You know, they have to find some way to disable them. And this is where Cecile points out, have you ever seen the pocket watch grandma has? That gadget could nullify the chips in our hearts. We, of course, know the details here, but they don't at this point. So that's the, the tension of the story here. So they have a chance of escaping if they can get grandma's uh, pocket watch. So this is when this sort of uh, important item within this chapter comes up. And that is this kind of... Uh, old practice embroidery that has been passed down among the classes of trainees here and uh, there's a lot of embroidery done on it um and basically krona is told flip it over look only at the blue threads and it's basically this really detailed map embroidered into this uh, test embroidery um that um Cecile got it from her sister in training who was thinking of escaping and she got it from a different trainee it's been passed down from everyone who has tried to escape and slowly they've developed this perfect map of headquarters basically and uh, we see cecile say i don't want to see any uh, see off any more of my friends and krona agrees on this so they're going to work together to make this happen and survive so krona it commits herself to her training doing as as well as she can uh sneaking stuff you know to try and get into a good position find the way to escape 
Um, and yeah, the, we then get into the idea of, you know, okay, if we change into caterer uniforms, we can exit from the back of the kitchen. What did you find out? And they just get across, you know, this is the pattern of the guards and stuff like that. They need to find out how to get uh, grandma's pocket watch. That's the, the last kind of big part of the plan. Otherwise, they've thought it all through. Um, so uh, then the question comes up. Krona asks, what do you want to do when you go outside? Um, so the, the question is, uh, for each of them, what are they going to do? So Krona says, um, you know, she wants to play more sports, become number one in the world, do all those interviews, become rich. Then a prince would propose to me and I was going to be a kind mother to a happy family. Um, and Cecile, all she wants is, um, I always thought that I wanted to be like you. So I was hoping to dye my hair black and get it curled when I went outside. Just much more simple than Krona's idea. Uh, but she says that I always wanted straight blonde hair like you. Um, and they just have a back and forth about that. Um, and Cecile does note here that like when when the others teased me, you always came to fight by my side. And that's sort of why they're allies in here. So a really nice dynamic between these two, of course. Um, she was happy to have someone on her side, which is the reverse of the situation right now. Krona's happy to have Cecile on her side in the, the training, uh, of course, here. Um, and yeah, they just continue to kind of bond over everything, uh, at which point we find out about a escape attempt. Someone else has tried to escape before they have. And they note as this the escape attempt happens, how quickly and effortlessly she is found and basically taken out, killed, right in front of them all. Um, and this obviously puts everyone in a terrible position. How can they escape knowing that pretty much that's going to happen to them? Again, they haven't figured out the whole, you know, the twist with the pocket watch yet, but, you know, we'll get to it. Uh, so Crown is like, I don't think we can do it. Um, but Cecile is like, if the two of them do it together, they can. Um, so Krona reveals she has figured out how to steal the pocket watch from grandma which is that um on friday nights grandma has a meeting after that she always uses the bath in the ward and that is also the day that Krona has to do the laundry and she can basically just go to the next room and grab the pocket watch during that break so Krona's figured it out through her investigation and we immediately cut to Krona doing this and when she opens up the pocket watch, she realizes that it's not a gadget to disable the chips. It's basically just a radar for, for where everyone is. This is how they find escapees as soon as possible. So she runs to warn Cecile that they have to uh, stop doing the plan. At which point Cecile comes out with grandma and is like, Krona stole your pocket watch. So she is basically like snitched on her here. And it's this massive betrayal moment for Krona here where she has to reveal that she has the, the pocket watch. And it's revealed here. Cecile has always reported any suspicious activity among the trainees. This time she told me that you were planning to escape this sister training academy and that you were planning to steal my tracking device. And Krona obviously tries to turn this back around of like, no, it was Cecile. She planned the whole thing. She came up with the escape plan, which is the truth of it. Um, and we see Cecile here. You're so dumb, Krona. I told you in the beginning, everyone's going to do anything to stay alive. Uh, you gave me an opening. You're so stupid. Um, and yeah, she, she revealed, who do you think hid your embroidery right at the start of the, the story? It was Cecile, of course. Um, and she just notes, thanks to your help, it was easy to knock down the other trainees. So it's this real twist that she is this real manipulator. And this is how she gets ahead in the sister training academy is by, you know, kind of forcing people into escape attempts and then snitching on them. It's uh, pretty terrible here. But um, uh, Krona obviously feels really betrayed by this after a lot of kind of pretty you know, emotional moments between the two of them as they kind of bond of like, you haven't changed, I've always wanted to be like you, I was really happy when you arrived. And so we see that this is where the Krona that we know comes from. In this world, the only option for us is to betray, kick and drag people down to survive in order to live. And um, so Krona is released from behind bars here. And grandma reveals that she has proof that Cecile was the ringleader of the escape. 
and she reveals we're losing a candidate today. Number 72684, Cecile, you have been rejected. So it's a big sort of twist. The embroidery pattern comes out. This is a map of headquarters, isn't it? Um, there are old threads in here, therefore it's difficult to think that Krona is the ringleader when she arrived here only a month ago. Um, so suddenly, Krona's reverse, you know, no, it was Cecile behind it all ends up being the the thing that actually confirms what happened. Of course, the fact remains that Krona stole my watch, but it sounds like you instructed her to do so. This time we have to dispose of you as Cecile is dragged away. And Grandma just notes it's a nice little trophy to have this, you know, old map of what was going on. Um, so yeah, compete is the main kind of thing here. I worked hard to raise my score and I was able to become a sister. At 19 years old, 73584 was the youngest to become mom. So that is Isabel. Um, uh, I'll surpass that woman too. So this is where the rivalry with Isabella comes from. Uh, and the just insane competitiveness from Krona. And then 10 years passed, we are assigning you to assist plant three. Look at me now, Cecile. I've moved up to become a sister sent to a house. Just as I've beaten you, I shall obtain the position of mom. So... This would be, I suppose, one place to end it, but I really like actually what this chapter does with its last few pages here. We cut to the flashback of Cecile about to be eaten by the demons, and she's just like, good, everything went as planned. When I saw her that day, I was really happy. I won't let her die. I don't want her to die. An escape is impossible. I've seen it fail many times. What I can do was to make her snitch on me to give her the cold-bloodedness to survive here. Sorry, Krona, you're going to live. You'll be fine. I have confidence in you, my precious little sister. Uh, I wish I could have seen the sky at the end, uh, as we cut to, you know, Krona dead. So it, it's a really tragic ending in the end here of that Cecile basically sacrificed herself to allow Krona to become someone who could survive and be as competitive as possible to get through this process. All because I suppose Krona stood up for her back when they were together at the house previously and this is her sort of returning that favor of like an escape attempt is never going to work here so the only way to basically get her to sort of just be someone who will win and succeed and survive by becoming a mom eventually is to force her to become like the most ruthless person here and what better way to change her into that by the ultimate betrayal have her seemingly best friend be the one to snitch on her and force her to then reverse snitch and be willing to you know step over people to get where she needs to it's kind of brutal um but there is a sort of like connection I suppose between these two characters that is quite good and then the last page um, is obviously uh, Krona dead the sky we look up, up at when we're truly free when that day comes you'll be with me ah the sky is so beautiful and we see I suppose I suppose in the afterlife Krona and Cecile playing together of like they both didn't survive but they're together in the end I suppose so a nice little kind of uh, emotional uh, story here definitely adds quite a lot to Krona in terms of uh, more heavily explaining how she went from being you know say just a some a kid from one of the houses who took up the decision to potentially become a mom so go into the sister training and how she became the pretty you know crazy obsessed with beating Isabella character that we met in the main series of The Promised Neverland. So it succeeded in what it needed to do and is definitely a good chapter. Uh, I think the only criticism of this chapter really is just that is this what we need to really add on to The Promised Neverland? Not necessarily when the ending is such a major problem. But hopefully the next extra chapter can do that. Hopefully that is the one that finally gives us scenes set chronologically after chapter 181. That's what we need. But uh, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on The Promised Neverland chapter 181.2.
2, this uh, Krona side story. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.